Hey guys, how's it going? Sam here checking in on you. How is your Monday coming along? I hear a number of you are heading back into work. Some. Uh, at least uh, operation and production stuff. So uh, let us know how that goes. Uh, I'm told they've put in some maybe some new rules, taped down places on the floor for good social distancing, rearrange some of the chairs. Yeah, maybe created some new SOP. Ooh, everyone loves new SOP. Alright, now, um, today we are going to be talking about something that is fundamental and that is dear to all of us. Well, maybe you don't hold it so dear, but we all do it. Yeah, that's right. Sleep. Well, you know, even if you don't do it consciously, you, you have to do it at some point, right? So, before we do that, of course, let's get to our little Korean lesson. So, yeah, I'm sure you are an expert at reading Korean Hangul now, right? Uh, feel free to let me know if you have any uh, particular phrases you'd like to say. Oh, yes, that's right, Carol did mention uh, she wanted to know how to say goodnight. Um, yes, so there's a few ways of saying it as uh, there is in Korean. So the formal way would be something like Annyeonghi Jumuseyo. That's like uh, very formal. Uh, and you would say to people you know, that are older than you or people that you're not so familiar with. Um, but I guess generally if you're talking to uh, you know, friends, family, uh, you just say Chalja. Yeah, that works, I guess. Okay, uh, anyway, let's hop to today's phrase. Okay, so I, I figure you guys are familiar with the way these our characters are now. Uh, maybe I've written them a bit funny, but you can figure it out. Okay, so this character means what in Korean. So you've probably seen it a couple of times. So it's more. So it's what. So that gives you indication this is a question. Okay, so more, mock. So, it's a monguri or mugul. Mok. Mok. Looks like he's gonna eat it. Alright, and then there is this guy. You recognize him? Mm, look familiar? That lovey dovey French skunk. Pipi la pew. Yeah. Um, what does he have to do with this? Well, I'll tell you once you read this character. So again, this, this circle is a silent, this is the U sound, and this is the L sound, so it's UL. So it's a bit like OOLALA, which La French like to say. Then Mon Chéri, oui, très bien. Okay, let us move along. Capcina. Okay, so what is this? the G or the K, in this case the K, more like the K. Okay, so this is car, like a car, see the car? It's a carrot car. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then of course there's the yo, the little polite yo at the end, which you can add or remove as you see fit, right, as the uh, situation calls for. Okay, so let's put it together. More, more. Ul kayo. Mo mogul kayo? It's a question. Mo mogul kayo? Alright, what does it mean? So, yesterday we learned how to say I'm hungry. Do you remember how to say that? It sounds like a particular food item. A round one. I got bagel. Bego payo? Bego payo means I'm hungry. Okay, so of the, the natural follow-up to that, after you've said you've, you've indicated that you are hungry, is to say, what are we going to eat? And that's what this means. So more is what? Mok is eat, if you remember. Yeah, you remember the phrase? Pop mok gesso? Have you eaten pop mok? Have you eaten your rice? So this is more mok ul kai. So what are we going to eat? Alright. 
Mo mok ul kayo. So you can say something like, Beko payo. Mo mok ul kayo. What are you gonna eat? Okay. Yeah, and maybe we'll cover some more food related stuff. Because, you know, uh, food is, uh, of course, very central, very vital to uh, cultural communication, right? And to, I guess, interaction and relationships, right? So you gotta, gotta know this stuff, right? So another thing, of course, that is vital is bananas. <laughs> you thought I was gonna say sleep, didn't you? Okay, so in case you guys didn't know, there is in existence something called the blue banana or the java the blue java banana yeah i, I thought it was a, a hoax at first you know it's like photoshopped but no these are real real bananas okay and do you want to know what they taste like like bananas duh yes but even better they supposedly taste like vanilla ice cream yep that's how blue they get vanilla ice cream so they are reported to be creamier than the usual banana so a bit like custardy and they taste like vanilla ice cream so they are also known as the ice cream banana how, how crazy is that what where are they why are they not in the supermarket how are people not like like replacing the you know good old banana with this one must cost a fortune okay so a little bit about the ice cream banana so uh, you can find it in Hawaii, in uh, Southeast Asia, ooh, and in Central America. So it likes to grow in tropical countries, like bananas do. Okay, it's apparently not hard to grow. Uh, you just need to get your hands on some seeds or a little plant, depending on how much money you want to spend. Okay, so yeah, definitely. Uh, if you're living in a tropi tropical country, like Malaysia, Singapore, maybe go get you some. Ooh, tempting, huh? Bananas, yeah. You can, uh, you can sweep the market, sell everybody your awesome blue bananas. Nobody's gonna believe their eyes. I mean, I still don't believe it. Yep, seeing is believing. So there you go, blue bananas. You learned something new, I hope, or you already knew it. Meh, boring. Okay then. Well, let's go on to our next topic. Sleeping kitties. No, I'm just joking. This is just pictures about sleep. Okay, so let's talk about sleep. So, uh, of course, um, I'm sure it's been drilled into your head. You know, sleep is essential for life. So sleep has kind of become a chore for a lot of people. You're like, oh my god, okay, I gotta go sleep now because I gotta get up for work early. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe you shouldn't think of it like that because sleep is actually like a superpower. It's actually like something, obviously it's good for us. I mean, we know that much, but you know, when there's, uh, when there's things that are good for us ever enjoyable, right? Well, sleep's actually not too bad. It's kind of enjoyable, I guess. All right, um, but so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why, why is sleep good? Well, there are many, many things good about sleep, but one thing that they found with sleep is that it helps your immunity. Well, duh. Yeah, okay. So they did a study at the University of Chicago, okay? And they found that um, people who were, were... Okay, so they took they took two groups, of, of course, you know, as you do with a, with a scientific study. So one group was normal, the control group, people who had regular sleep, eight hours a night, okay? and another group that was sleep deprived, so less than six hours of sleep. Okay, generally, under, anything under six and a half, you're considered to be sleep deprived for most people, okay? And they gave both of these people the flu vaccine, boop, okay? And then sent them on their way. Of course, they did the, you know, the blood tests and all that, okay? And it was found that the, the people who were sleep deprived had significantly lower antibodies to the flu. Okay, how much lower? Up to half the amount of the people who had enough sleep. Okay, so if you're sleep deprived, your body has a much 
laggier, much slower immune response. Okay, so it took it, it. It's not permanent, of course. So the people who were sleep deprived took up to a month, three to four weeks, to get to the same level of antibodies for the flu as the people who had enough sleep. See, so there you go. So not having enough sleep, you know, obviously has a very strong influence on your immunity, which is very important. Maybe now, you know, when there is like a virus going around, yeah. I mean, yeah. So obviously, don't don't try and catch it. But you know you want to be ready for when you do catch it, right? And if you're not getting enough sleep, I mean, I, I don't know why. Maybe you're tossing and turning at night. Yeah, it's gonna obviously gonna affect your immunity, right? It was found that uh, another study done at the Carnegie Mellon University, I think Mellon, 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 whatever. Yeah, so they they did another study, similar one, but not not to do with the vaccine. They just they just uh, had the two groups, obviously one with enough sleep, one without. And they found, and they monitored them, and they found that the the people who didn't have enough sleep were three times as likely to catch a cold, catch a rhinovirus, another virus. Okay, so it seems there's a trend there. I mean, I'm sure they'll do studies for COVID-19 as well. Um, but you know, considering with viruses, we are pretty much almost fully reliant on our immune systems to fight off, fight them off. You know, because in case you didn't know, antibiotics don't do jack shit to viruses. No, seriously, look it up. Don't 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 trust my word. Don't take my word for it. But they do jack shit. Antibiotics are for bacteria and fungus. Okay, the bigger stuff. Viruses are not affected by antibiotics because they just they just go into your own cells. Okay, and they hide there. The parasites. Okay. Not like uh, bacteria and fungus, you know. They're like they're like uh, playing around with your cells. They are, you know, whatever. I'm not going to go into technicality of it, but if you don't believe me, go go look it up. Okay, antibiotics they don't doesn't do anything, right? You need something stronger. You need you need some antivirals, and uh, yeah, and those firstly they're not they're not they're not they don't work all that easily. It's not it's not that simple as uh, antibiotics. Not that straightforward. Because uh, just because of the nature, the way the way viruses work, right? The way they are. Okay. And uh, secondly, they're probably not cheap. Antivirals. Mm. You know, drug companies gotta make money. Okay. So um, back to my original point is that you really need your immunity, your immune system. You need it. It needs you. Well, I mean, it doesn't really need you, but you know, <laughs> you're kind of you're kind of housing the damn thing. Okay. So. In order to keep your immunity working, you need to get sleep. Yes, yes. Remember when your parents keep nagging you to sleep? It's because you need it. Okay. Yeah. Again, I'm nagging you. Yeah. You. Okay. But the good thing is, um, I mean, you don't you don't have to get you know, all of it in one block. Yeah. So they they found that napping actually helps. It's beneficial. Okay. Uh, just. Um, a word of caution: If you if your nap if you're nap gonna nap, make sure you, you make it part of your routine. Okay, I'll get to that later when we talk about sleep tips. Um, but yeah, so regarding sleep, uh, there are you know a lot of benefits of sleep. Okay, here here's a couple. Okay, so here's here's some benefits. Uh, I won't go into too much detail. I'm sure you know some of these, uh, but maybe you don't. So sleep has been found to show has been proven by scientific studies that you, you concentrate better during the day after you have a good night's sleep, your memory works better. So uh, sleep kind of acts like a, like a learning tool. So it helps to consolidate the things that you learned while you're awake. And uh, maybe sometimes it may churn them out in dreams. You know, it's, me, it's your mind doing its thing. Uh, but it's also been found that it helps with uh, retention of memory. So your short-term memories become your long-term memories. Think of it like a file transfer on your computer, you know, save to hard disk, okay? All right, uh, yeah, and it's pretty cool, right? And it's also being found now slowly that it helps creativity. So how does it help creativity? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's it's not like you wake up in the middle of night and go, ooh, Eureka, I just had a great idea. No, not, not quite like that. But how, how it helps, or how at least the theories go that helps, is it helps integrate. You, you make links in your brain that you wouldn't otherwise make. So maybe you learned something you know, to do with cats today and you went to sleep. And in your sleep, your, your brain linked this cat fact with 
something to do with your work. Like, uh, say you're working on, you know, cleaning the air or something, and you thought, ooh, cat fur. Yeah, I don't know. Just making an example. But so your, your brain makes weird links, okay? It links things that you wouldn't otherwise link. So, you know, that's that's why you get the phrase, you know, if you're, if you're stuck on a problem or you're not feeling so well, you know, and uh, you can't solve a problem, you know, there's that phrase, why don't you go and sleep on it, right? Not, not why don't you go stay up all night and keep thinking about it until you crack the code. No, go sleep on it, right? Because your mind works in weird and mysterious ways, okay? And sleep is the facilitator of that. So sleep is your friend. Uh, yeah, so that, that ties in with helping you make better decisions, presumably, you know, because you've had time to sleep on it, okay? So your brain can, can uh, process and come up with different solutions, you know, you might come up with uh, you know, better, better ideas, all right? And it has an impact on emotional stuff as well. So it acts like a dampener. So if you're feeling sucky, right, and you go to sleep, it kind of, it kind of numbs it a little. It kind of reduces you know, your, your focus on the bad stuff, okay? Yeah, have I given you enough reasons to sleep? Oh, you're like, oh my god, you're terrible. You're giving me so much pressure. How am I going to sleep at night now? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, so I guess, uh, I don't know, I suppose you'd like some, some tips. Yeah, because if you think about it, really, considering how, you know, how many years we spend sleeping, you'd think we'd be good at it, you know? So good that we can do it with our eyes closed. <laughs> get it? Right, but no, apparently, you know, no matter how old you get, you still, you still have, I mean, how young you get, you know, you still have issues with sleep. It's a perennial battle that we face, right? You know. So, uh, what should you do if you can't sleep? That's a good question, right? Because now we get to the practical stuff. Well, okay, here's something you can do. Okay, here, listen to this. If you can't sleep, just lie on the edge of your bed. Because you'll soon drop off. Get it? Ha ha ha! Okay, fine. Okay, real tips. Guys, real, real tips. No more jokes. I promise. <laughs> I can promise that. Okay, so here are some tips for better sleep. I'm sure you've seen this before. It's nothing new really, but you know, let's treat like revision. Okay, so um, yeah, make it a routine because your body likes to have a regularity. Okay, so you know, don't, don't mix it up. Uh, like, I guess what most people do, do is, you know, obviously Monday to Friday when you're working, you sleep earlier, you get up earlier because, you know, you got to wake up early. And then the weekends, you know, you you, know, you drag it out. You stay up late because, you know, you get a party. Well, you're not partying now, are you? Okay? Unless you're a Thai and you're celebrating the Songkran Festival. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those, those, those guys got like, got like fined like a bajillion dollars, right? Oh, oh, you didn't hear about that? Yeah. Anyway, so a bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, people from Thailand who were staying here in Malaysia um, decided to have a party. Uh, yeah, they got caught. Okay, so no parties. So you can, you can sleep at the same time every day, every day of the week, because they're all the same now, right? And you're at home, which is near your bed, okay? So another thing is, uh, when you're on your bed, don't do other stuff apart from sleep, okay, and, you know, whatever, the other things, right, but yeah, no, keep it for sleeping, so that your body, in a way, is trained, it's like Pavlovian, you know, when you see that bed, when you lie on that bed, it's sleepy time, it's not phone time, okay, it's not, it's not watch BTS videos till, like, you know, the next morning, <laughs> I'm sure nobody does that, right, right, Okay, yeah, no, no, I mean, yeah, you can, you can watch, you can watch some videos if it's part of your wind down routine. Okay, so that's another thing you can have a have a wind down routine. So that's that ties in with a bit of the relaxing music. So yes, the re the music is relaxing. You know, put on some rain music or you know like this piano music. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't you know stimulate your brain so much, and in a way it also trains you and your body to associate this these sounds these musics with sleep. You rest. So yeah, if, I mean, if you're used to watching like BTS videos before you go to sleep, then yeah, you know, keep it up. Just don't watch so many videos, okay? Just, just, you know, just tie it with sleep so that makes you tired, okay? Yeah, put your phone on silent. That's uh, that's kind of no-brainer. Um, and 
and uh, yeah, because I mean, isn't that the whole reason why we we sleep? Have you ever thought about it? The whole the whole purpose of sleep. What? Why do we sleep? It's so we can charge our phones. Yeah. See, if we didn't sleep, those phones would never get charged. Ugh. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, another thing is exercise. It's a good thing to try out. So you know, you tire your body, you tire your brain. You know, otherwise, otherwise, all that excess energy is gonna go to your head. You gotta roll around, think about stuff. Uh, milk and honey. I wouldn't recommend actually having like sugary stuff before you sleep. Um, but some 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 people it works. You know, nightcap. Yeah, but brush your teeth. Okay, after. <laughs> okay. Uh, take a warm shower. That helps. Okay, why does that help? So taking a warm shower um, causes the blood to flow to your peripheral, um, the periphery of your body. Okay, uh, so basically what it means is after you take a warm shower, when you come out of the shower, you lose heat a lot faster. Okay, and that cools your body down, right? And that ties into the cool part, because uh, when you sleep, your body temperature drops a few degrees below what it normally is. So you you cool down when you sleep. Right, because you're like in hibernation, right? It's like mini hibernation. So cool helps. Warm, not so good. Okay. So yes. So um, yeah, eh, evening walk, whatever. Uh, it's that. That's like the same as exercise, kind of. So uh, basically, yeah, it's it's the important thing is have a routine. Uh, you know, I mean, and if you if you do have that one bad night of sleep, so I mean, you know, maybe one one night in a week, you know, you have that really bad night. Um, maybe. Resist the temptation to nap during the day, especially late afternoon, right? Because uh, I know I said naps are good, but if it's not part of your regular routine, then it may disrupt your sleep pattern even more. Okay, I, I mean it's a theory. You know, different things work for different people. Um, but if you don't normally nap, maybe try just push on a little bit and then get a better night's sleep, right? As opposed to kind of ruining your sleep appetite by by napping and then you know and then you can't sleep for another night, maybe. Okay. All right. Um, the rabbit fact for the day. So sleep cycles for rabbits. When do they sleep? So as I mentioned previously, rabbits are crepuscular, so they have different sleep cycles from you and I. Okay. They they wake up periodically at night. So that's why you may hear them hopping around the cage, making funny noises. It's because they're awake. They need to check to make sure that they are still alive. Because, you know, they're prey animals. You know, the, the pesky predators can come out in the middle of the night and eat them. Nom, nom, nom. So they got to be alert. So they sleep relatively lightly. Uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, like they're mainly active during dawn and dusk. So that means they also sleep a lot during the middle of the day. So when you're away at work, they're probably sleeping, which is just as well. And then when you come back, you know, in the evening, they're like, Ooh, play with me, play with me. You know, something like that. Yeah. So it kind of works out. Okay. Um, yep. So, um, yeah, tell me what other sleep tips do you have? Uh, you know, things like dimming the lights. Yeah, that has an effect. Uh, there's, uh, there's a debate about the whole blue light thing. You know, I don't know if you've heard, you know, whether the blue light affects you. So if you're staring at a screen with the bluish light, it, uh, you know, makes it harder for sleep or whatever. It has funny effects on you. Um, uh, I mean, so far there's you know different trains of thought, um, but yeah, definitely if your phone has the option change to warm lighting, maybe that helps. So it's uh, you know, it doesn't uh, doesn't make you so awake. Okay, and maybe you can sleep happily like this chubby bunny, chubby bunny. All right, and I will leave you with this cute little picture, little doodle of a Samoyed. Yes, I requested it. Then do it for me. Thank you. Samoyed puppy. Samoyed. I like Samoyeds. It's because they have, they have the word Sam in them. Ha ha ha. You could even say, I put this and now I don't. Because these guys are like way cuter. Super hyper friendly. Aren't they? Okay. Alright, that's all for me. I think I've waffled on long enough. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to find out more about sleep, then yeah, maybe we can look more into that in the future. But for now, have a good night. Let's rest. All right, take this opportunity while you're at home, because uh, I know the temptation is there. You know, now that the, there's less pressure to you know 
get up as early as you normally do, right? Maybe because maybe you have normally you have like a 45 minute commute to work. You gotta drive 45 minutes to that damn traffic. So now there is no traffic, and there is you know no real need to wake up as early because you if you've got that 9 a.m. meeting, you just wake up at like you know 8:30, brush your teeth, have a little breakfast, and then bam, you're good to go. Or I know some of you guys wake up like 8.58, you know. <laughs> right. That's okay. So what that means is, you know, you, you can stay up later at night, right? Yeah. So, you know, hey, whatever whatever works for you, as long as you get enough hours of sleep. So, you know, there, there's the, the train of thought previously that, you know, you have to sleep before, you know, midnight or before 11 or before 10 or whatever, you know, and then you wake up a certain time. I mean, yes, it's good because that's when it gets dark. Um, but studies into sleep have shown that no, it doesn't matter. You can sleep. You can sleep at three a.m. It's just you know, if you get eight, seven, eight hours, you know, it just means you wake up a lot later. You know, you you you're, you're still good to go. You're still okay. You know, if that is the way you roll. Yeah. Okay, if that's your routine. So, yeah. So I mean, you know, eventually this MCO is going to come to some sort of conclusion eventually. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a couple more extensions, but um, if you develop bad sleeping habits during this time, then when it kind of kind of goes back a little bit, you know, like, it'll never revert to what it was, but, you know, it'll be something new, a new normal, a new new uh, situation, a new way of life. Uh, then, you know, if you have crappy sleeping habits, then it is uh, going to be a bit tougher for you to break those habits, right? Because, uh, you know, they say habits uh, create are formed uh, in about three weeks, you know, 21 days to be precise. So if you do the same thing every day for 21 days, then it's going to stick. It's going to become a habit. All right. So, um, you know, I myself, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I can't say I have the best sleeping habits. I'm guilty. You know, I stay up a little later than usual. Maybe sleep in a little bit more than I normally would. True, perhaps. I admit um, but yeah, uh, I'd like to think that I get a good night's rest at night. You know, I just calm out. And um, I don't know. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's definitely there's ways, there's things I could improve. I could have a better routine. Uh, you know, maybe I don't know. I don't know how good my immunity is gonna be. Uh, but my phone definitely gets charged, so. I'd say enough sleep, right? If your phone, if you wake up and your phone's not charged, that is like the worst feeling, right? You're like, oh my god, did I not sleep enough? Or is there something wrong with my phone charger? Oh, right, terrible, both terrible feelings. All right, so yeah, nobody likes to wake up to that. Okay, so oh yeah, there's there's another thing, there's another tip. Uh, it's give yourself something to wake up, look forward to when you wake up. Right. That was a tip I heard a while back. So it's like, uh, you know, don't, obviously, don't make it a negative uh, head, set, uh, head, you know, mindset when you wake up, because uh, for a lot of people, it's it's uh, this thing called sleep procrastination. There you go. That's a new something new for you. Um, so it's it's just a it's just a new phrase on an old thing. Uh, it's where you know if you dread waking up because you gotta wake up, you gotta face the shit of the next day. You know, you gotta get to work. You gotta get up early. You gotta meet deadlines, you gotta go face your boss, right? So that makes you put off sleep because you're like, oh, I, that's no fun, I don't wanna do that. So let's, let's just, you know, stay up a little bit later, do what I enjoy doing, and then I'll sleep, right? So it's called sleep procrastination. Now humans, we're very good at procrastination in general. Okay, so this is regarding sleep. So what you can do is you have a little, little thing, even, even a small thing, like a, you know, like uh, something to give you uh, something to wake up for in the morning, you know. Uh, like hey, hey, maybe you maybe your game resets in the morning. Huh? there you go. It, you know, you get new energy or whatever in for for that game. So instead of playing it late into the night, you sleep earlier and you wake up first thing in the morning and you play that game. You know, or you know, obviously if you've got a if you got a partner or something, you know, you look forward to a, a text from them. You know, a little good morning as a you know, pick me up in the morning. It's something to look forward to, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, that one's obviously a little bit outside your control. I mean, you can nag me. You can be like, hey, come on, you gotta text me. Good morning, every morning. And make sure there's lots of 
lovey dovey emoticons, okay? Okay, otherwise I'm gonna be angry at you for like another week. I'm not gonna talk to you, I'm not gonna text you. Yeah, no, don't do that. Okay, see, that has the opposite effect. Yeah, but I mean, okay, things within your control. So, it's something simple like, uh, you know, make that make that thing you like eating for breakfast. Alright, so then, you know, in the morning you're like, yes, let's go, I wanna wake up, I wanna eat that, eat that stuff. Right. Or maybe you just just you know don't eat that much at night and in the morning you'll be hungry. Right. And then that will that will prompt you to wake up a bit earlier. Yeah, it's happened to me a couple of times. I'll be like, oh I'm so hungry. Time to get up, get up and eat. Right? And then you know, yeah, there you go. It wakes it up, wakes you up. Right? Anything for that little bit of extra serotonin, yeah, dopamine, whatever. Okay. So uh, yeah, there's there's a little tip. Do something you enjoy doing in the morning. And now's a good time, right? Because you have more, in a way, more control, right? Like I mentioned, because you're not forced, forced. You you don't you don't have to go into office, right? You don't have to fight the daily commute that you're so used to, right? So you're in your own environment. So hey, you know, make make some pancakes. Eat a scoop of ice cream first thing in the morning. Yeah, how about that? You can do whatever you like, right? Unless your parents ate all the ice cream. Nah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I think I've surpassed my limit. Okay, um, so stay safe out there, guys. Stay healthy and enjoy your sleep. Enjoy it because it is your friend and your superpower. Okay, sleep is not just something you gotta do, it's not a chore, it's something you should enjoy. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to myself mostly because, um, you know, well, for starters, I mean, nobody, nobody really listens to this, but, but mainly because I'm going to cycle myself into, like, sleeping properly. Ah, good sleep habits. Here I come. Okay, uh, maybe I'll update you guys. Be like, dear diary, today I slept eight and a half hours. I'm so proud of myself. Da. Okay. SpongeBob out. I mean Sam. Sam out. Alright. Catch you guys later. Da. How do I say that? Hmm. Da um et bois. That's right. Okay. Toodles. <laughs>